Hi, I'm Lauren from LSP Actions and welcome to this updated video tutorial for the LSP Texture Overlay Packs. This is the newest tutorial, so if you're new to using the textures or you've bought new ones and you want an update, this is the tutorial to watch. If you have any of the older packs and you're using the older version of the Applicator Actions, which is pre-November 2023, anything earlier than that, you can watch the older uh, tutorial videos which are underneath this one on the LSP Actions tutorial page or on YouTube, you can search LSP Actions Texture Tutorial. For this video, I'm going to be demonstrating using the Kensington Texture Overlays and the Texture Overlay Applicator Pack version 5. If you already own textures such as the Boutique, the uh, Artisan, the Camden Texture Overlays, you may have the older version of the Texture Applicator Actions which you can continue to use or you will also find the updated version of the actions in your download section of the account to use for free. At the moment on my screen I've got this beautiful image shot by Anna Brand. After downloading LSP Texture Pack from the website you'll notice in your account you have the texture overlays for example here on the screen I have the texture, the Kensington textures. You will also, um, if you've ordered the Camden textures, the Artisan, the Boutique or any other LSP Texture Packs, they will appear in a zip file. You can also download the applicator actions. There are several ways to get textures um, working in Photoshop for you. You can use um, you can use them as a library in Photoshop. You can find plenty of tutorials of that on YouTube. You can apply them by hand and you can check the video tutorial for that on the LSP Actions website. You can apply them using the texture pack applicator actions that I've crafted for you to give you plenty of options in colour grading and blending when it comes to using textures. So when you've downloaded the action file, you can double click to load this into Photoshop. Any problems loading this into Photoshop, um, you can go on the LSP Actions website under Video Tutorials, Installation Guides and click Photoshop Actions. In Photoshop you need to be able to see your Layers panel, so on Windows make sure you've hit Layers to see your different layers that you can work with. And also Actions. The Texture Pack applicator will appear at the bottom of your Action panel. And inside you can see you have an action for applying the textures with Creative Cloud. This way you get subject selection as well. If you're on an older version of Photoshop or Elements, you can use this version of the texture applicator. Again, if you don't want to use the applicator, you can watch the tutorial for applying a texture by hand or use your own hand editing. The actions are not essential, but they're a bonus I've popped in to give you plenty of options when it comes to applying a texture. We also have some extra actions here. A Photoshop action is a pre-recorded set of steps that plays out over your image, creating layers for you in the layers panel to work with. So I'm going to use the apply texture here. Now the important thing is when you're um, when you're downloading a zip file, you see the extension is ZIP. Photoshop cannot read zip files. The reason I do this is it because it compresses the download into a nice little file for you to download. Otherwise, you'd be waiting for a long time for these big files to download. On Windows, you right click and choose Extract All. On the Mac, you need to use the Archive Utility option. If you have any problems extracting a zip file, um, please go on to Google or Safari and search how to unzip um, or extract a zip or compressed file and you will find out how to do this. It's for download. And once you've extracted the zip files, you'll notice you can actually kind of access and see all of the textures. In these LSP texture packs, you have 10 versions of the texture, but each one has a coloured and a desaturated version for you to use. For example, in the Kensington pack, you have Belgravia and Belgravia desaturated. That means black and white. Bond, Bond desaturated. Chameleon, Chameleon desaturated. Crofton, Crofton desaturated. Duchess, Duchess desaturated. Elgin, Elgin desaturated. Elite, Elite desaturated. Harrow, Marl, uh, Ride and D. So you have these 10 textures, um, 20 altogether with the desaturated versions to use over your image. What I recommend at this stage is saving these somewhere on your computer. You could create a file, LSP textures, save them in there, entirely in what you like to do for your file organisation. And that means they're now ready to use and place in Photoshop. If you want to place the texture by hand, you come up here to file and you choose place embedded. But I'm going to show you how to do this using the actions. This is the texture applicator pack um, version 5. If you have an older pack, you can watch the other tutorials um, to see how that works. I'm just demonstrating texture applicator pack overlay um, number 5. 
because this one works a little bit differently. So I'm on Creative Cloud. I'm going to use the Creative Cloud applicator here. I'm in button mode, and the same with elements, you have to click the play button. Um, I'm on, on uh, grey mode. If you want to go into button mode, you can simply click button mode at the top, and you'll see the texture applicator actions in coloured one-click mode. The blue ones are the ones you want to click, or the purple. So I'm going to click apply, LSP apply the texture plus subject selection here. You open up the folders, you don't want to access the zip file, remember you need to have compressed, decompressed these files and saved them somewhere on your computer to be able to use them. So you need to open up the unzipped version to be able to see your textures. If you're on a Mac, it's going to look a little bit different, but you'll still be able to access the textures. You can go through and decide which one you're going to want to add to your image. These are all designed with a fine art hand-painted master's feel in mind, created um, individually by hand. For this image here, this is the perfect kind of background. You want a kind of a mid-tone background. If your background is very black or very white, um, the textures are not going to blend quite so well. They're just not going to show up so much. Um, if you use white backgrounds, you might be better off with the white background textures over at the LSP Actions website. So for this one, how about we go with uh, Bond to start with. So I'm just going to double click that. It's going to come up so I can place this over the whole image. So you just resize, you can hit enter or the checkbox, and the action is now playing out blend with your image. Because I'm using the Creative Cloud action, um, it has added subject selection, so I have changed to things is literally how the action works. It's made a subject selection for you. At this stage, you might want to zoom in and double check you're happy with the selection, especially around the hair. The great thing about textures is, is they overlay your image so you can blend a little bit. So I can blend this around the hairline using a white brush because a white brush on a mask means show. A black brush means hide. So you can see on the mask here, the subject cut out in black means it's hidden. If you, um, for example, if you're using an older version of Photoshop, you're just going to get a white layer mask or a black layer mask. Black means the texture is completely hidden from your image. So if you click on the mask with a white brush, you can begin to paint this on the areas you want it to show. Um, a white layer mask means it's showing completely over your image. So you can grab a black layer mask and paint this off your subject's skin. Just carefully like this. It really uh, depends on which version of Photoshop you're using and how you're applying the textures. Plenty of ways. Once you understand how layer masks work, you'll be flying. But we're demonstrating using Creative Cloud. So. We now have the texture added at this point. You could select the texture, you can move it around if you want to. You see here it's moving it around behind your subject. You can decide exactly where you want this texture to move, you can you know, place it in, all these different things. You can also watch the tutorial for adding perspective to your texture, but I'll show you how to do that in this tutorial in a little moment. You have a button here, um, a layer in your layers panel. These are all turned off. You see when a layer is turned on, you have an eye icon. When they're turned off, there's nothing. So you could turn on the desaturate and that takes the color down. You can turn that on or off. And you also have full color grading. In the old version of the actions, these were skin paints. Now they've changed a little bit. So if you're more comfortable using the old versions, if you own any older LSP texture packs, I'll leave those older um, actions in there if you're more comfortable using them. This is just a different way of doing it. So we have subject color grade neutral, dark, lighter, or the whole image color grade. And what these do, they're gonna blend your subject with the texture. This image and background we've added in, the texture actually goes really well without color grading, but let me show you what these do. So for example, color grade neutral, I'm gonna turn this on and you'll see a very subtle shift in the skin, the tones and clothing of your subject. You see that? On, off, on, off. And what that does, it's blending the texture with your subject without adding texture over. You can change the opacity of these layers as well to bring them up stronger or lighter. So these are really nice to play with. You have a darker version of the colour grade, on and off, and a lighter version of the colour grade, on and off. Each one of these has a black layer mask with a white cutout on them if you're using the Creative Cloud Photoshop. If you're in an older version of Photoshop, these masks will be here for you to paint on using a black to hide or a white to show any way you want this to show. For example here, you know, we can, we can paint it off or on. And then at the top, you have whole image color grade. So if we turn that on, that's going to grade the whole image down, giving it that fine art finish. On and off, and you can change the opacity up and down. 
So just in a click it gives you that um, final finish and you can turn the texture on or off. If at any point you want to um, add any of these extra layers, make sure you've clicked on the texture in your, um, in your uh, um, layers panel first because they apply to this texture layer only. So if you just clicked somewhere else and you apply them, you're not really going to see the effect or you might get an error message. So make sure you click the texture. You have it show up better on darker images, show up better on light images. So for example, this one, we're going to darken that texture down if I just click it. I can turn the eye icon to turn it off. Decrease any yellows in the texture. This texture doesn't have yellows, we don't need that one. If you find it looking a little bit yellowed and stained and you don't like that, I mean I personally love it, if you don't like that you can use decrease the yellows. Desaturate the texture, you can increase the contrast of the texture there just by clicking and turn it off. Sharpen the texture up. Blur the texture, make sure you click on the texture first and play blur the texture. So if you want the texture blurred in the background you play this one and with a white brush you can paint on this blur effect calm the texture down in the background without blurring your subject. On a blur, this is a Gaussian blur smart object, you can double click this one and you can change the level of blur for the texture. Eye icon again turns it on or off. You have a matte effect that flows for the whole image so you can mattify overlay which you can um, turn the layer mask on or off or paint it over. I'm going to click on this texture again, go in here. You can intensify this texture and again you can slide the opacity around to get the best effect. That's changed the blend mode to overlay. You can go back to soft light, which was the original blend mode. There's so much to play with. If you're new to layers and actions, take your time, start simple, and you can begin playing a little bit more with these layers uh, when you're more confident with it. You have color change. And we can just slide this all a little bit and paint this off any areas you don't want it to show using a black brush can just tweak those colours a little bit if you wanted to. And turn that one off. And if you wanted to make an extra subject selection for any masking, you can play the extra 11 subjects. Creative Cloud only, and that's made a selection for you up here which you can use for any of your masking. Control or Command D to deselect. Mini toolkit here, you can flatten the image, you can undo anything, take a snapshot, add a vignette here, it darkens the edges, and again you can paint this away anyway you don't want it to show and a mini sharpen up. So that's what's included in these free bonus actions. So much for um, applying your textures. I'm going to show you now how we add um, a perspective to your texture layer. So you click on your texture in the layers panel, the texture that you've applied. You grab marquee tool and you make a selection up until the floor and wall join of your image. Edit transform perspective there is also a video tutorial on this specifically on the tutorial section I'm just showing you quickly you drag out the bottom layer of the texture here and this is creating a perspective hit enter to turn the blur layer off so we can see what we're doing hit enter control command D to deselect and you can see now that we've got this floor and wall join which we didn't have before so that really does help create that beautiful texture coming all the way over your image. It's a really nice touch to do and adds a lot more professionalism to adding a texture to your image. Let's add another one. This is a lighter background here, so I'm going to click Apply Texture with Subject Selection. Hit Continue. Which textures shall we apply for this one? How about uh, Duchess? So I'm going to bring the texture in and resize this over the image and hit Enter. Or the little checkbox, the action is playing out now to create all those lovely layers. I'm going to let that play out for a moment. And there we go. Now this is a lighter background. You can see here it's a lighter background. So the texture is going to be kind of calmer and more faded. Again, if you've got very light backgrounds, you might want to apply the texture using the LSP white um, textures for light backgrounds. You can change the blend mode to anything you want up here. For example, overlay has given us a much stronger texture. Multiply is going to give us a darker texture. By default it will be soft light but let's change it to multiply and at this stage you're going to want to refine the masking I'm just coming up here you can see there is a, a little bit of masking gone on there on the texture so I'm going to grab the brush set to white or black and I recommend bringing your flow down for this part so we can make the texture show on any areas by painting it over 
or we can make it not show by painting in black. So I'm just using a very low black, so we've got a medium kind of texture coming over here, because this fabric's semi-see-through. So we still want to be able to see the texture through it. This is where the creativity part of Photoshop really comes in, the things you can do. Now you can see here, the subject selection around the fingers hasn't been great. So I'm going to get a small brush, a small hard brush, set to white to show the texture. And I'm just going to manually paint this in. And in a moment, I'm going to switch the brush, brush to black. Let's bring that flow up a little bit so the brush is a bit stronger. Even with Photoshop subject selection, which is getting better all the time, there are sometimes going to be a few discrepancies that you're going to want to zoom in and check. So now with a black brush, I'm going to paint the texture off the fingers. It just takes sometimes a little bit of painting. You can see I've gone over the edges. I'm being a little bit sloppy with this, but I'm trying to show you the different kind of effects you're going to get. So back to white. White means show, so in this case we're on the texture layer that we're showing, and black means hide. And then what you could do after this is what I recommend for blending. It's all about the blending. You know, as a woman, if you're putting makeup on, it's all about the blend, 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 and it's the same in Photoshop. It's all about the blending. Turn texture on and off as well to see where you are. So, what I'm going to do, I'm just selecting my brush. I'm going to make it quite large, a low flow, very soft. I'm just going to come around a little bit and just dab this texture showing here. Dabbing texture over the um, any fabrics and hair can really help blend and it helps you avoid that cutout. Switching between a black and a white, can you see here? We're just blend, blend, blending. Glad I chose this image actually because it allows me to show you um, a little bit more of uh, some of the techniques you may want to use when applying a texture in Photoshop. Not just LSP, just any texture. If you've created your own, if you are, um, if you've purchased textures elsewhere, this is just a, a really good blending technique you can use. Understanding layers and masks. If you're really new to Photoshop, you don't use layers that much. Um, it's kind of what Photoshop is all about: is the ability to have layers. They're like layers of tracing paper. A layer mask is like a lotto scratch card. White means show, black means hide. And you can decide what you want to show and what you want to hide um, on your image. What you want, how you want to blend them, anything like that. So now I'm using the, just a little bit of blending here. And we've added the texture. I'm going to click on the texture with the marquee tool. That's the little kind of uh, rectangle. Floor will join. And we're going to add the perspective in here. So edit perspective, you can see I'm just putting that on. It makes you have to go off the screen quite a bit to pull it properly, so it kind of slides along a bit. Hit enter, deselect, and now we have the floor wall join. We can um, click on the texture to tone it down a bit. That will give you if texture desaturated, it goes back to the original toning in the image. If you desaturate, you don't really need the color grades too much, but you can use them if you wanted to turning them on, mixing and matching, but I'm going to use the desaturate for this one. The thing is, there's lots of different options, it really depends on your image and what you're using. I'm going to click the vignette, darken those edges down a little bit, back on the texture. We can increase the contrast, make it even darker. And again, this is a layer mask, so you can grab black to kind of to hide it in any areas, and white to show. You can click on the actual texture itself and you can take the opacity down or up. It really just depends on what you want to achieve. But adding these textures adds a lot to your image. How about we add a texture to a darker background? Now I don't recommend for um, textures for images with backgrounds this dark. You're much better off with one of the overlays such as uh, glitter or bokeh or anything like that for these kind of backgrounds. But let's add one anyway and I'll show you a couple of blending tips. I'm going to click on apply the texture. Let's choose one that might work well for this image, something a little bit, let's how about ride, 
So again, we're going to resize the texture over the whole image. We're not going to need perspective for this one because it's a three quarter inch subject. There's no floor. So it's just about now. It's blending those layers. Again, if you want to know how to do this by hand, you can look on the tutorials. So you see the texture has been added in, but we can't really see it that well. It is there. If I zoom in here, you can see the texture. There is texture on the background, but it's a very dark background. So the blending isn't going to show so much. So what you can do, you can hit on the show on dark images. This is just going to lift the texture up a little bit and we can bring that opacity up too. You can double click here if you want to increase the uh, the lightness anymore using levels. If you're unsure of how to use levels, it's a great um, histogram tool in Photoshop. So we can just bring that up a little bit. Another thing I like to do is click underneath the texture, click your background. On your adjustments, you can add levels or curves. And you can just bring the brightness of the whole image up until the texture starts showing a little bit better. And grab your brush, set it to black, and we can start painting this off of our subject. So it's only we only want this showing, you know, on the background. So that's a way of brightening that background up, you see, so we get that texture showing a little bit more. Lots of different things you can do. Once you understand layers in Photoshop, it opens up a whole ball game for you. So there we have before and after, adding that texture to a darker background. This um, toning of background is the very best for adding any textures, not just LSP, just any textures, this lovely mid-tone background. So let's apply a texture to this one. Let's go for something um, that's going to blend nicely with the image because you want something that's kind of going to go with your image. How about T for this one? So I'm going to place the texture in, hit enter, a little check, the action is in, and there we go, it's added in beautifully because it's got that lovely mid-tone background. And we can turn the blending layers on or off if you wanted to, to kind of create that, um, that fine art finish. You can use black to rub this off any way you don't want it to show. I'm going to create the perspective. By making a selection, transform perspective, making sure you've clicked the actual texture. And that just adds that little bit of perspective into the bottom, it makes the texture look like it's the actual backdrop. So there we have uh, before and after, before and after. And really, really pretty. These textures were made for those mid tone backgrounds. And you can desaturate the texture by turning this on so it completely matches your image. And you can see it's a really nice subject selection that Photoshop Creative Cloud has made. If you're not on Creative Cloud, you'll need to do the painting and masking yourself. And one more, let's go one more here. So apply the texture. Let's go for something um, really, really bold for this one. And what we're going to do, I'll show you how to change that blend mode to get it even bolder as well with this image. It's playing out. And you can see that's added a really beautiful texture into the background of this image here. I'll come in a little bit. Before and after. I'm just going to grab a white brush and just bed the texture into the hair a little more. And around the clothes. It's only really the skin you don't want the texture to show on too much. And desaturate, but... In my opinion, we want those colours and toning. And we can also click on one of the um, colour grades here. Just to colour grade our subject in with that texture and toning. And you can see it's given us a completely different result. Just in a few clicks. Really, really pretty. You can change the blend mode of the texture to overlay if you want it to look even stronger. Soft light is gentle. That's the, um, the default for the actions. Overlay is going to make it a lot stronger, so it gives you that really, really bold look. This actual subject I'm just going to darken. So that's applying textures using the newest um, texture application, um, Action version 5. And you can use the old ones if you still own them as well and watch the tutorials for those demonstrating using the LSP Kensington texture overlays um, available over on the LSP Actions website. Ideally, these are best suited for mid-tone um, backgrounds, 
like this, that lovely mid-tone background, and like this one here, and you will get those best beautiful texture results with this one. I hope you love using these. I'd love to see your results over in the LSP Actions Facebook group. Any questions, you can also post them in the group. We're a helpful bunch, um, and I'd love to see you in there. That's Facebook forward slash groups forward slash Lemon Sky Actions. I'm Lauren. Thanks for watching.